Okay. So now it's exactly 15 minutes past 11. Uh, we start with uh, uh, the second part of uh, this day after the break. Um, I show you now the agenda uh, for the next uh, two hours, two and a half hours. Um, 11.15, it's now. Uh, BI Automation uh, and BI Art will do a very nice, uh, very fancy uh, presentation. Um, at 12 o'clock, uh, you see the presentation of uh, Exeta about uh, Data World 2.0 with Analytics Creator. And uh, exactly at uh, one o'clock, uh, we will have the Q&A session. So uh, if you have uh, some questions, you can, you can post it in the chat and uh, we or also our partners will answer you. Okay, um, now we start with uh, BI automation. So I give the control to Ah, yeah, it works. <laughs> Hello, welcome. My name is Robert Book, and I will share my screen now. So, can you all see my screen? Yes, yes. it works. Yes, it works. Okay, cool, fine. So, what is the, our our um, presentation is about uh, a customer where we implemented with the help of uh, analytics creator. Uh, a data warehouse. Uh, this is the first part in my presentation and then we will switch to a very short demo uh, as I think uh, that this is the, the most critical part uh, when you start using Analytics Creator and it and uh, I don't want to say well, more about that but you will see in a minute um, what will come up to you. So my name is Robert Book. I'm a BI architect uh, at BI Automation GmbH. Elmir will, uh, will, hand, uh, will hand over later to Elmir Sud. He will do the demo with Analytics Creator. Um, if you have any later questions or you want to contact me, please, here's my LinkedIn profile. You can find me there. Um, so what is about the introduction? Uh, what is the customer? So. Uh, I started working with Analytics Creator in 2018 when I was working for PM1 in Austria. This is a consulting company for BI consulting in the uh, DACH area, that means Germany, uh, Switzerland and Austria. Uh, I liked Analytics Creator in short terms AC uh, very much uh, from the beginning. I started, I moved from uh, from PM1, from the consulting company, to another BI automation uh, com company, which is now my company. And we started a cooperation with BI Art, um, and we agreed to use uh, Analytics Creator on, on our uh, projects, as it is much easier to step into a project uh, when you have a graphical interface. Uh, Elmir started working with Analytics Creator in June 2020, and uh, there you can see, so he's now one and a half year fit with Analytics Creator, and he's really tough. So what I personally like is the good cooperation with the very sympathetic team of Analytics Creator. They are open for innovations, changes in the UI, and uh, adding uh, new features. And uh, within days, sometimes these new features and functionality is implemented. So for, in for instance, this is the old UI of Analytics Creator, and now it looks like that. You have seen it here already. So from coming back to, to, our, to our customer, so this is an international engineering consulting company, and they have 2,500 employees worldwide in 40 offices across uh, five countries, continents, and um, all project related and financial data uh, converge at the headquarter in Austria. So the topic was to, naja, to feed this new controlling cube, which was already there, uh, with new food. Yeah, so this is uh, somehow the subtitle of our presentation. Um, 
the, what, what do I mean with that? Uh, there were requirements from the customer. They, because um, they said, okay, we have an existing ERP system. Uh, it is called Agresso. Agresso is, is now bought from Unit 4. Uh, and uh, so if you look at this link, there is the Wikipedia entry about Unit 4. This is the old one. Uh, and they moved to Deltec Meconomy. Yeah. Um, and uh, they said, yeah, so it, that could not be that uh, difficult to simply use the same cube uh, for another source. Now, yeah. so uh, this is what customers are thinking. The controlling cube uh, should bring the same functionality as before. Uh, reports and dashboards are very major, so only the data source should change. Uh, somehow it should be, it should be compatible and, and it should be possible to move, uh, to, to also see the, uh, the old aggresso data and the data structures so that uh, the reports must not build from the scratch, so they can simply more or less copy paste it and reuse it. Yes, and um, so the question is, um, um, how does it look like from the architectural point? So, so I call it here architecture 1.0 controlling cube and the new. And uh, so this is the old Agresso ERP system where uh, every all, all these project related and financial data are inside, but they have also other, uh, other data sources like an intranet about employee information. They have an active directory where we, hand, where we handle the, uh, the rights, the security rights. And there are also some CSV files, uh, which are somehow um, yeah, additional data. To, to enrich the data of, of, ERP, of the ERP system. So this is the old one. How did it work? Uh, there was a data warehouse, a staging layer, it fed by ETL or ELT processes. You know, there's a discussion, extract, load, transform, or extract, transform, load. So uh, extract, load, transform is the first one uh, which works here because then you have the same tables that are here in these systems are in the staging. And then you go with an ETL process in the core uh, area and in the MAT area. So here are the aggregations. And finally, here you have your final semantic data model. And then you can build up a tabular model or a cube. And uh, the old one there is a cube, a controlling cube. And uh, on the, and these controlling cubes, there are several reports which, which are uh, related on that uh, controlling cube. And uh, that means this, this green lines is the query direction. That's why it's not going in this direction, just that for a small explanation. Yeah, the customer was very happy and, uh, and, and he said, okay, well, he want to build more reports um, on that cube. So, but now we have uh, the, the following uh, challenges, the staging database and the data and the DVH database. Yeah, so that means these two, areas uh, where separated databases. That means we thought about how can we join these databases together because analytics creator supports one database. Uh, nowadays, this is no problem from the from the uh, performance side. So in earlier days of Microsoft SQL Server, this was a problem. So it, that's what was the reason why it was separated. Uh, today, you can go uh, to file groups uh, below the database and uh, can separate so that you have enough I.O. available. So from this perspective, uh, we need to migrate them together. Uh, but how should we do it from the architectural side? Because we need to guarantee the customer that we have a 20, that he has a 24 seven operation and can continue and can, can look on his reports. And the second one is uh, how can we find out if the controlling cube at the end when the version 2.0 is there is uh, has the same data as it, as in the controlling cube 1.0. And then additionally, the data lineage was not visible in this old controlling cube. Yeah, they didn't use uh, analytics creator, so it was really hard to find out uh, how the how the data flow works. And from the ETL jobs, uh, historically, they always put full loads for in this uh, controlling group 1.0. That means all uh, data are in the uh, Agresso system and so, uh, every day they do a full load in the, in the cube. Now, that means for the new one, we, needed, we need to develop many, many uh, ETL jobs. 
And uh, then we said, okay, uh, let's think about the architecture. So this is the old one. Um, and, and now we have this ERP system from Deltec and uh, should we integrate it somehow here or what should we do? Yeah, and simply we put the same structure uh, on, a, on, a, on a second machine or in a second database. And uh, because we also have this intranet data, we have the Active Directory information and the CSV information. We put it in staging in core and semantic to in the controlling cube two and we have the reports. And um, yeah, and we also we, we could um, find out if there are any differences between these two, <coughs> if everything works correctly. The customer did all the checks, so the customer uh, agreed that this is working for him. Why did we choose analytics to create us? So first of all, um, it took us a hell of time to learn about the data lineage in the controlling cube one, and we didn't want to do any documentation about that in the in the new one uh, because it was a very small uh, there's a very nice functionality where analytics creator is doing all the documentation and so on we could copy paste etl so we wanted to use and we wanted to use delta loads uh, for the etl jobs uh, we want to bring the two databases together uh, so this was part of the new architecture and as I was fascinated that by the beginning from analytics creator, I could imagine that the that building up a data warehouse could be really fast. And um, we didn't need to build up SSIS jobs, uh, also the ETLs jobs, because they are more built uh, automatically. And uh, based on the chosen architecture, we had a really good template, this, or this controlling group 1.0. And so we could start building it from the scratch. Did we succeed? Uh, yes, customer is, uh, customer is satisfied. We still um, uh, work with them together. The cube load to this controlling cube uh, is done within 20 minutes due to the delta load so in, or in the controlling cube one, the, uh, which still exists for historical reasons. Um, the, the cube is um, for around four hours. Uh, and it is not working, and there is no. It is not working with uh, analytics creator, so we, it is still in the. It is the old one, just for historical reason. And um, economy Deltec will be rolled out finally by the end of 2021 in all 40 countries uh, at the customer side. So the current status is that uh, 32 countries are finished, and for 32 countries, the data are in this new controlling cube. Uh, adaptions. If there will be, there will be some small adaptions also in the future, yeah. Uh, but it is very easy to do it as there is a, a very good picture about the data lineage in Analytics Creator. Um, so uh, we have not the permission to show anything about uh, about uh, the customer and the customer uh, data. Uh, so we decided to go now for a very small demonstration uh, how to build uh, something from the scratch. And the question is, so why do a customer need a data warehouse? Yeah, because all these uh, the big customers, they know they want to go to be more digital and they want to react and they want to uh, be data driven. They want to uh, see their data and then do their, um, their, their decisions. And um, so the first one is there are many data sources which uh, which must be joined somehow together. But the second part is, and the second part is, there is a missing historization in product in production systems. That means uh, if, uh, for instance, uh, pro, uh, any any data of articles, for instance, are change as a change in the production system. And uh, you you simply load this new uh, this new data into your data warehouse, and there is no historization. Then your data are wrong, and uh, that means uh, Ralph Kimball uh, and has developed this so-called um, SCD2 historization, uh, slowly changing dimensions to historization, and there's automatically a date from and a date to for each and every uh, record. And uh, and then then it is clear uh, how long was this record valid and 
one month later, uh, new records are valid, and uh, then you can do also a, a time travel back into back back into uh, uh, time travel back, and you will see always the right data there. Okay. Calculated KPIs is also a reason why a customer needs a data warehouse. Um, just want to mention that and uh, performance for sure. Yeah, so if you finally um, uh, load your data in a OLAP, um, uh, that means a cube or a tabular model, then you have more performance than if you simply just uh, uh, go to one table. Yeah, so it all the, the one hint from my side. If, if only one, two or three persons are looking on data, then they can always work with a table or a few in a rational, relational database. But if you have, yeah, let's say 10, yeah, then you run into troubles. And if you have 2,500 people that need to analyze something, then you need a, a tabular model or a cube. Yeah. Direct queries to a production system can also harm the production system. So you need so you need a copy to a data warehouse. So these are the major reasons why a customer need a data warehouse, and and I want to be concentrate on on the historization part. Historization means slowly changing dimensions, invented by Ralph Kimball. You have this very small um, articles. So for instance, wines, red wine, white wine, and red wine, and uh, and with the end of this year, the year 2020. Uh, Yes, with the end of the year 2020, you find out ah, the last entry, this Portuguese Weisherbst is not a red wine, it, it is a rosé wine. Yeah? So you change it in your source system, and if you have a good uh, data warehouse built with analytics creator, then you automatically get the following um, entry in your, in your database. That means there is a fourth entry now. It has the same product number. It is now a rosé wine. It has the same price, so no increase of the price. And um, the, this this entry is now valid starting from uh, this year till the end of all times. End of all times means in our IT the year 9,999. 9, okay, and um, how to do that? And uh, what are the advantages now with if you do it with an analytics creator? So first of all, you have this very nice um, graphical data lineage. So the data lineage is really visible and you know at every stage in your data warehouse um, where are, what is the name of the, uh, the table and where are they coming from and where are they going to. ETL jobs can be easily built and the historization, you simply choose the, the suitable one. So do you want the SCD1 or the SCD2? Please concentrate on SCD2. This is the real historization. And um, in our demo that we have pr prepared, we simply use two tables yeah, that you do not get confused. There is a table which is called orders and there is a table which is called people. So uh, the, that means uh, to do it really simple, there is an order CSV file and the people CSV file, and they are linked together via a one to N to one or one to N um, relation. That means the region in the people uh, table uh, is the same region as in the orders table. So here we have the big table where data are moving, and here we have only four entries in this in this table. It's, the region is called North, South, East, and West, and there are people related to these regions. They are responsible for these regions, and uh, this is the very simple data model. And uh, as you can suppose, so if uh, the, a person is keep, uh, yeah, if if a, a other person is responsible for a region, then you have exactly that situation that in this table are only four entries, but the person has changed, and you need to do a historization if the next month and the next month is coming. So in this CSV files, there's a pipe, uh, uh, a pipe as separator. So you know this semicolon is uh, the most common way, but we use the pipe. You can read it a little bit better, and um, yeah, and it's best practice to have the pipe there. So, what will you see in the demo? We built up a, a CT2 historization with Analytics Creator. We deploy. Uh, we, are, we will deploy the data warehouse, and we will do. A time travel, yeah. That means uh, uh, Elmi has pre prepared a video 
where you will, yeah, where you see when we change the date on the Windows PC to run ATLs exactly at the right point of time. Yeah, so we first load orders and people uh, a first time, then we order, then we load the orders and people table for November, then we load it for December, and then finally we show in a query that this historization is really done correctly. Yeah, and then we switch back to the AC deployment and um, look if it is done successfully. And now, yeah, it's an honor that uh, to to introduce um, Elmir, and uh, I want to hand over my presentation to him. Simply need to look where he is. So here it is, and I stop here. And uh, I will mute myself and uh, yeah. and Elmir, please take over. Can't hear Elmir, you. Elmir. You're muted. Sorry. Hello, everybody. Thank you, okay. Robert, for the brief introduction. Now I'll share my screen also. So just a moment. Perfect. So I will show a simple outline that we have prepared for this simple demo. We will create similarly as Mr. Dimitri has been doing it in the previous session. We'll just start analytics creator. We will sh show how database name is generated, login, create new project, create new connector. The same connector will be used for both sources, for both people and orders. We will have also some custom options for our own demo. We will change schema in import from import to staging and in, in from SDG to PSTA, which means persistent staging. So then we will next proceed to staging. We will use these new sources. We will add imports for them, for orders, for people. Then for those new tables, we will create historization. We will add a simple reference. Then also we will add this core, add the core part, even though we will not fully focus on it, we will create it just for purpose of having full data warehouse. Then we will proceed to deployment. We will add a new deployment. Just for purpose, purpose of demonstration, we will add this prefix that we have for database name, even though Dimitri would say no, no here. But we will just do it to see changes directly in our data warehouse and database. We'll set comp compatibility to the one that we are already having on our personal PC. We will save it and deploy. Then we will switch to our Visual Studio Time Machine video which would not be possible to show in real time due to the fact that if we change time on our PC, then we would not be able to run Teams. So now we will start. Also, we'll show you how data looks at each step. So for example, when we are doing initial load, this is our people.csv file. We will have these four people in charge of these regions. So when we change our time and we change our file, this is the new file we get. So we see that new person is in charge for rest. And then in the next next ETL load and the next file that we got for next month, we will have this new change where one employee has got married and changed her surname. So we will start analytics creator. We will show. So this is our server. We will show how database name is generated, how repository's name is generated. Okay, we will say, okay, now it will take some time to create repository. We will first create a new repository. We call it Artsy Congress. So now Analytic Creator is creating its structure, its repository in our server. So it will use it to generate wizard and everything we need. So the most important part is that we would not be able to do it usually in real time. So we'll just it, to present it in real time how the change will be detected. Therefore, we will use the video and we will now proceed with analytics creator. It's important to know that if we would if we would deploy and just run ETLs and changing the files from our file structure by using current time, then we would not be able to 
make a, to make a difference to know what is the change because those ETLs, those debt fund that bill states would be very similar to each other. So just few rows would enter in those changes. So therefore we will use the video. So perfectly it's getting near to end. Perfect. So now nothing yet is created in our database, nor the database itself is created. We will create new connectors, new connector. We will add just one connector. We'll call CSV file. We will choose CSV because we are getting from Austria. We will use German Austria data and we will add this vertical bar as our data separator. We will save it and we will now just simply create two new sources for our two new tables. Create new source. First one will be orders. We also have to show some pl placeholder files just to get the structure of the files. So now we will create orders. We will have the path. We will simply go here. We will take the path from here. Go back to into analytics creator, paste it and add our orders. We will save it and we will simply get the CSV structure. So we already know that our row ID will be our primary key. And we will save it so the rest of the structure will also know it. And we will create another source, which will be people. So it will be also CSV. We it will have same path except the file name will be different. People. We will save it and get the CSV structure. As you already know, our region will be our primary key, which we will also use for historization. So now we go here. So we do not get scared because of those red crosses. With we just now proceed to our next step, which is that we create that we also change our schema. It's just our personal preference. OK, we go and find schemas. We say in staging it will be SDA. In persistent staging it will be CSDA. We will save it. We will go, go now back to red process. We will just add a new import. Here, analytic creator is smart enough to know. We already fill out all of this. We will just create manually our package. We will call it import orders will be a SSIS package, Hit finish. So it's already there and we will do the same for the people at import. Import. So now when we synchronize this new database will be created on our SQL server. And it will be of course empty as we did not deploy it yet. So we go back and see what is our current next step. So we will go and add historization for each of our tables. You can simply go here in layers and find this layer and add, and add it or just click it on the table and just add historization. So it's already there. You just need to create a new package. This you could also add it in just one package, but we we will create separate packages. For orders, we will have STD2 for all columns, and we will not close, as Dimitri was mentioning before, because we are getting each month new data. We will not, we do not want to close the old data as it will not be changed. So we will click do not close, finish. So you can see here, you can also select what we want, what we don't want. Also, we will select that values from new keys, every new row with its own primary key, when it's loaded, it will have the same that font date. So we will select it to be this generic one. We just know that there are no other versions of it anywhere. We will save it. Procedure is already generated, as you can see. So we will refresh. And we will now go also to people, add historization. 
So new package. Is people. And here we'll also have SCD2, but we will close as we will only update current rows that are already present here. As we do not care about remark changes, we will set it to STD1, so it will not be detected as a change, but it will be updated in our database. We will select also that new case will be same as previously. We will save it, we will refresh, and now we synchronize, the diagram will be OK. While synchronizing, we will see what is our next step. So after historization, in historization, we also have to add a reference from orders to people using this region column. We sim simply go to the layers, we found our package, we found our layer, and go to the reference, add a new reference. As you already know, it will be one many to one relationship. We will join, let, we'll do a left join from table orders to PSDA people, and it will be done on column region. Perfect. We will save it, and reference will be created. Refresh. Now we proceed to our core part. For simplicity, we will just create a simple galaxy. We will create just one simple galaxy. We will name it galaxy. We save it. We will synchronize the huh? And now we can proceed to create our star. We will simply create it here. We will say add star. We will name it star, add the schema star, and we will just simply save it for purpose of just having it here. So we will also synchronize. So we have created galaxy, create a star. Now we will add a calendar dimension. We will just create it for one of our columns. It will be orders column. We simply go add and add a calendar dimension. It's already prepared here. So it's important to note this macro that will be automatically created. We could also create star here or we will create it manually. Let's click finish. So we synchronize the VH just to fix everything in place. OK, now we have our co-layer. We will simply go to definition. We will add a star view, which will be called dim. We can click create the VH. Perfect. Now we proceed to creating dimensions and facts for each table. So first we will create a dimension for so analytics creator will ask us in this part what do you want to do we will create a dimension for which table people do we persist it no we do not we just proceed to next okay we don't have any relations we will not use any foreign keys we will just finish and we will create star manually in the definition itself so here we simply select star and star view will be created we create View in data warehouse and cancel. Refresh. We synchronize the warehouse just to get everything clear. And we will do the same thing for PSD orders. We will add transformation, dimension. We will go next. We will go next as we will not have any foreign keys. And we will finish. 
So here also we can add our dimension view for orders. We can create in there. Here you can just simply delete those columns that you think are facts. So for example, we can create we can delete sales profit discount. Create in there. OK, we refresh it and now the thing to do left is to create a fact. So we will create a fact for orders, but we will also use this new reference that we have created. So I don't see for orders that dimension has been created. Now we will also create a new fact table for, okay, it's there. So we will also now create fact as we just selected here as fact. We go next. We know that we have created one relation when we will use it. We go next. This is the structure of the foreign case. Next and star will be there. So now we will also add a new foreign key. We will call the foreign key for the date. We will select it from the first table. It will be for the date, as you can see here. And now we will use this new macro that we have previously created by just creating calendar dimension. So it will just convert it. We will create it in there we have. Refresh, synchronize DVH. And we will also add snapshot dimension as it's already been created in the in the data warehouse. Okay, finish. We will also create star view for dimension and we will say, okay, we'll save it as it is. Get in there, huh? okay, perfect. We refresh it. And now we synchronize there, huh? So if we go to our steps, we have created all of necessary stuff that we need for core. Now we can proceed to deployment after data warehouse is synchronized. Deployment is simply created if we find here on the left side. So snapshot is now there. We go on the left side. We have deployments. We click add deployment. We give it a name. Arte. Use directly this database that we have created. Therefore, I this I add this critic TVH, but usually you don't do it on production. So we will select all packages. We also create select SSI and environment variable. We will save it. Yeah, it's important that we also select right directory where we want to deploy our solution. So we go this piece documents, RT Congress and deployment. Perfect. OK, now I'll save it and deploy it. Now we switch to our video so where we will do the same thing. So we will synchronize our new, just a new duplicate with a different name, as you will see, just to show how it actually runs usually. So we will have a just different database name that will be created in our server we will just deploy it we will set the right path to our deployment as it is done with the current version that we were working on and we will say okay and deploy it 
We will wait for the deployment to finish. We will run the Visual Studio Find solution, Visual Studio solution, and just open it and set it up. So now we'll simply wait. And we will, next thing to do in, in the video, we will load the data, then we will set the time, and et cetera, et cetera. So let's go back. So after it's finished, we'll just speed it up. So now after deployment is done, we opened it using Visual Studio. We will now navigate to workflow package. We will try to run it, of course, before we must ensure that we are having the right data in our file. So just by running workflow package, all other packages will be run, including historization stored procedures. Yes, so the next thing to do, we will prepare our data. We will just get the data as if we were getting it in real time. We will copy it, rename it, and set it in the right place so it will be loaded as the current data that SSIS jobs will be connected to. So now we can see that our data warehouse is empty, but now after we run our workflow package, we will see that it will be filled out with data similar to the picture that I already shown to you with additional two columns, that this and that one. Of course, you can change those two columns to the language that you like. Perfect, it is run correctly. Now we will just go back to our data warehouse and we will see what data it has loaded inside. Now we can see that all data is valid as it's as it is our initial load and this is the current valid data. Now we will pretend like we're about to get the new data for November 2020. The ETL will be run on 1st of December. We will simply just adjust the time on our personal machine and it will be current date at also for SSIS and SQL Server. Yes, now we'll simply create 1st of December 2020. We'll change it and we will go back to also SSIS to load our November data as it's already been prepared here. So first of all, we will archive. You can archive it, the old data that you have, so that we don't, do not lose it. We'll put it into archive and get the new data for November from our data folder. We will simply copy it as we were doing it before, and we will rename it to the proper naming convention that we have. Now we will go back to our Visual Studio solution. We will rerun our workflow package, but now with having date set to 1st of December of in 2020. We will start, it will be fast as there is no lot of data. So now we can go also to our data warehouse to see did were the changes detected. So now you can see that from 1st of December at 5 in the morning, this new person is in charge for West. And this old employee is not valid anymore as this that this is not this generic 9999. So now we will also get the data for December. As one of the employees has got has got married on 30th of December. We will load the data. We will do simple steps as we were doing before. Archive the data and get it from the data and rename it. Simply. Now we will go back to our workbook package. We will see that we have to load December data. As it's that to be first of 
January 2020 that we have completed our data and it will be run in the workflow package. So we can start it and see if it runs successfully. Hopefully, yes. And yeah, it's there and we will go back to our data warehouse and see how does the data look now. We execute it and we see that there is a new instance for South as the surname has changed here for the change was detected. And the old surname is not valid anymore. It is valid just for the rows that were at that period of time. So now we can go back to our data warehouse that we have. We will close the video and we have this data warehouse already inside. We can see the data is already there. And yeah, it's there. We'll just use our simple, simple script that we have previously created just to see that changes were detected and we can see who was in charge at the time we are interested in. So we will just specifically for West. So now we can see for most of the orders, that were happening 2017 and etc. Person Anna was responsible for. But now, at certain point of time, this should change as the new person is in charge for West. So now we can see that new person Betty Bugatti is in charge for West, but starting from 2nd of December, because that's the time when our ETL has run and detected the change. So it run at pi in the morning. Therefore, this row will be for Anna, even though it's in December. So the change was detected properly. So I hope that you now have seen how actually historization is very easy with analytics creator and that you can easily do modification just when the customer asks, for example, if you're having all SCD two columns with just few of clicks and get generating a new script, you can disable some of the columns so, so the changes would not be detected for those columns and that you would not have overload of data if you're having memory issues, storage issues. So that's all for this presentation. Okay, thank you, Elmir. Um, what you have seen is uh, how quickly you can implement uh, this uh, SCT2 historization uh, with the help of analytics creator. Uh, if you want to do that manually in a data warehouse, you will find out that you need more than a day to do that. And with analytics creator, you are really fast. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thanks a lot to Elmir and Robert. It was a really great presentation. Another way to, to uh, use Analytics Creator without uh, uh, the wizard. It's also working very fast. So now we came uh, to the next presentation.